I'm not sure you've been able to see the president's tweet, but this one line, our great American companies are hereby ordered to immediately start looking for an alternative to China, including bringing your companies home and making your products in the USA. Uh, what does that mean when the president is ordering U.S. companies uh, to change their supply chains? It means nothing. So many of the words and so many of his tweets mean nothing, and it means absolutely nothing. What we should be doing is making America a more attractive place to invest, and then we'll have more companies investing here instead of China. Ordering them to stop, it just means nothing. So how do you make, how do you make America a more attractive place to invest? I mean, we've seen tax reform, well, right? We've first seen of all, by having, How else? Having more stability and predictability. The type of trade policy we've had, tariffs on one day, tariffs off the next day. The type of macro policy, payroll tax cuts one day, no payroll tax cuts the next day. Just making some of that more stable and consistent would be a good start. Certainly things like investing more in education, infrastructure, um, and the like. But we're also going to have global companies. They're going to be operating around the world. China's a huge market. You have to be in China to serve that market. To tell American companies to go out of China would be you know, hugely crippling to the U.S. economy relative to the rest of the world, which is becoming more integrated with China. I want to get your thoughts on uh, the speech we just got from Fed Chair Powell, the president also tweeting about that, about that as well, saying the Fed did, quote, nothing. It is incredible that they can speak without knowing or asking what I am doing, which will be announced shortly. We have a very strong dollar and a very weak Fed. I will work brilliantly with both. And then he goes on to, to keep tweeting along this line. What is your sense, what is your takeaway from what the Fed chair had to say this morning, given the fact that he has been walking really such a fine line? Right. At a moment like this, I'm just so grateful that there's really an adult in the room for the U.S. economy. Um, Jay Powell gave a terrific speech. He talked more clearly about the risks that trade policy is posing to the U.S. economy than he ever has before. He was clear that he was going to look through the noise and look at the longer term in terms of how he's setting U.S. monetary policy. And he certainly didn't tell us what he was doing next on rates, because I don't think he knows what he's doing next on rates. He's going to see what goes on in the world, what goes on in the U.S., what goes on in the data, um, and make a decision based on those facts, not on some preconceived theory. Uh, Jason, market took a spill, uh, and it's clearly related to that presidential yeah. tweet. Dow's down 213. Obviously, it's uh, barely 1%, not even quite that. But to what degree do you think the market is going to start uh, reacting violently to requests from the White House that appear to be more and more extreme? Yeah, I, the question is, do people believe them? And do they think, or do, are they just noise on Twitter? You know, to date, a lot of this has just been noise on Twitter. Um, but then every now and then you have, you know, another set of tariffs um, placed on China. China places another set of tariffs on us. It's just an enormously uncertain situation right now where we don't know if these are words or actions. And you have to place some probability on, on them being tied to actions. Yeah, and I, I think that sort of gets to, to what's so challenging about this environment right now, Jason, which is the fact that a lot of what we're seeing in terms of the slowdown in global economic growth right now is tied to politics. It's tied to fiscal policy or, in some cases, lack thereof. We can point to what's going on around all the uncertainty here in the U.S., especially around these trade talks with China. But also you can point to Brexit. You can talk, toward, you can talk to this sort of bias towards a leaning of uh, fiscal austerity in Germany as well as that region continues to slow down. And yet it would seem, whether it is the president here or other leaders around the world or even Wall Street and investors right now, everybody's sort of turning to the Fed and central banks as the entities that could actually keep a recession or keep a, a global economic growth on track. Is that, is that fair to put that weight on central banks? I mean, he's the only adult in the room right now, the central banks are in general. And so that's not ideal to put all that weight on them. Germany should be doing a fiscal expansion. The UK should be having a more orderly policy. You know, Italy should have more certainty. But we can't have all of that. And so we need our central banks right now. I think we shouldn't lose the big picture. The unemployment rate is under 4%. Inflation is close to the 2% target. Wages are growing. I think, you know, the U.S. Central Bank, a number of other central banks around the world, have done a really good job 
navigating turbulent times. I just wish the times were a bit less turbulent. Uh, speaking of turbulence, Dow now down 300 points. Uh, S&P down all, about 36. Gold, Jason, is up $25. And you can see the defensive trade uh, mm -hmm. reaccelerating this morning. I asked you about market uh, responses to things like the president's tweets. Um, I wonder, too, whether or not this does anything to further crimp business investment, business confidence, whether it means that we're going to get PMIs sub-50, not just on market, but uh, on ISM in just about a week. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very worried about, you know, we're in a manufacturing recession. We saw business investment contract in the last quarter. Consumers are keeping the U.S. economy going. You know, as long as the unemployment rate stays low and wages are rising, consumers can keep doing that. Um, but that won't happen if businesses aren't investing. We won't get our potential growth rate up, which is really important um, if businesses aren't investing. And business investment is much more sensitive to this type of noise and uncertainty um, than the consumer side. So I, I think that's a big area of concern right now. So I was going to say, so, so Jason, lastly, I guess when you look out, given the fact there is so much uncertainty, when you look out over you know, the coming months, the coming year plus, how do you expect, I guess, how do you expect things are going to go, both here in the U.S. and globally? Um, I have no idea. In part, the economy is always really hard to predict, and so you need to be ready for contingencies. But a lot of the global economy hinges now on the decisions of a few people, one of them being President Donald Trump. And you know, I certainly uh, lay no claim to expertise in predicting um, what his next set of actions are going to be.